Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will provide evidence to support the evolution of eukaryotic cells through the endosymbiotic theory. So let's do this! Our learning target for today is, I can provide evidence to support the evolution of eukaryotic cells through endosymbiosis. Before we get into the endosymbiotic theory, let's first break down the word endosymbiosis to get a basic understanding of this concept. The prefix endo means inner or inside. The word symbiosis means the interaction between two different organisms that live close together and it usually benefits both organisms. So if we put these two words together, endosymbiosis, it literally means a relationship where one organism lives inside of another organism and they both benefit from the relationship. The endosymbiotic theory proposes that a symbiotic or beneficial relationship evolved over time with eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells that live within them. These prokaryotic cells that lived inside of the eukaryotic cells are now what we call our mitochondria and chloroplasts. These prokaryotic cells that evolved into mitochondria and chloroplasts received shelter and protection by living inside of the eukaryotic cell that they live in. And the eukaryotic host cell receives energy from the prokaryotic cells that evolved into the present day mitochondria and chloroplasts that are living inside of them. This is a perfect match where both organisms win. Now this is a true example of relationship goals. So let's explore the history of this successful relationship according to the endosymbiotic theory. We'll start off with the mitochondria. One hypothesis proposes that mitochondria evolved from single cell prokaryotes that were able to use oxygen to produce energy rich ATP. As you remember, ATP is the energy we use to power cellular processes and bodily functions. These prokaryotes were taken in by eukaryotic cells. Once inside of the eukaryotic cell, these energy making prokaryotes evolved into mitochondria that now power the cells of all multicellular organisms. The endosymbiotic relationship with these single cell prokaryotes that have now evolved into mitochondria gave eukaryotic cells the ability to use oxygen to create energy for themselves in the form of ATP. Cells would have been killed by the free oxygen in the atmosphere if they didn't have this ability to use oxygen to make ATP energy. This is why all plant and animal cells contain mitochondria. So to clear up a common misconception, yes, all plant cells do contain chloroplasts and mitochondria. These mitochondria are able to produce energy by taking in glucose from the food organisms eat and oxygen from the atmosphere and produce energy rich ATP. This process is known as cellular respiration. Speaking of chloroplasts, let's talk about them next. Another hypothesis proposed the idea that chloroplasts evolved from single cell prokaryotes that had the ability to photosynthesize. Photosynthesize or photosynthesis means these prokaryotes had the ability to use radiant sunlight energy, carbon dioxide, and water to synthesize chemical compounds known as glucose as their own energy rich food source. Over time, these photosynthetic prokaryotes were taken in by eukaryotic cells and evolved into the chloroplasts that are in plants and other photosynthetic eukaryotic cells. This now gave these eukaryotic cells the ability to use sunlight energy along with carbon dioxide and water to make glucose energy for themselves. Now let's take a look at the evidence that supports the endosymbiotic theory. Scientists proposed this idea over a century ago when they observed under a microscope that the membranes of mitochondria and chloroplasts were similar to cell membranes of free living prokaryotes. Some of the other supporting evidence includes Number one, both mitochondria and chloroplast DNA are circular and many copies of the DNA are present in both organelles just like the DNA in prokaryotic cells. All eukaryotic cells DNA is linear and not circular like that of mitochondria, chloroplast and prokaryotic cells. Number two, both mitochondria and chloroplasts have ribosomes and enzymes that are more similar to prokaryotic cells than they are to eukaryotic cells. This suggests that protein synthesis and waste digestion is similar to that of prokaryotic cells. Number three, mitochondria and chloroplasts both have their own cell membranes just like other independent single-celled organisms. This suggests that they were able to control what came in and out of their cell as a means of protection and also to take in needed materials and remove waste from their cell. Number four, both mitochondria and chloroplasts reproduce themselves independently of the cell in which they are in. This suggests that at one point they were living on their own and were capable of reproducing without the help or assistance of another organism. 
So now let's do a quick summary. The endosymbiotic theory proposes that around 4 billion years ago, primitive prokaryotic host cells took in aerobic bacteria which evolved into mitochondria. This led to the evolution of aerobic prokaryotic cells into basic aerobic eukaryotic cells. These cells continued to evolve into larger multicellular eukaryotic cells that form larger organisms such as animals, fungus, humans, and many other species that are able to take in oxygen and glucose to produce ATP energy to help them survive. Other eukaryotic cells took in photosynthetic bacteria in addition to the mitochondria that they already had in their cells. This gave these cells the ability to take in radiant sunlight energy, carbon dioxide, and water to make glucose sugars or food for themselves. These eukaryotic cells evolved into plants, algae, trees, and other photosynthetic eukaryotic cells. Remember, it is called endosymbiosis because mitochondria and chloroplasts receive shelter and protection by living inside the eukaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell receives energy from the mitochondria and chloroplasts to power cellular processes. I love this endosymbiotic relationship. And that's our video for today. Now it's such a nod to see how proficient you are with providing evidence to support the evolution of eukaryotes through endosymbiosis by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are hired for proficiency, record your associate proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive productive day.